Okay everyone, the day has finally arrived. Today I'm going to be staying in a bothy in Scotland for the first ever time. Let's go. Staying in a bothy is something I've always wanted to do. It looks so much fun and I've got a huge big bag of firewood with me. I've got a lighter so I'm looking forward to lighting a fire in the bothy tonight as well. In the distance there there's a loch coming into view. Wow just so peaceful here. So here's the map. I'm trying to get to the bothy here at the moment so you can see where I am at the blue dot. I've come a bit closer down to the loch now and the views are absolutely stunning. It feels quite eerie. There's no one here. As I was walking along the road, I heard coughing in the trees, which is quite creepy. Do animals cough? Like deer? Maybe they do. I'll have a rest here for a couple of minutes and take in the views and then continue on. I wonder if anyone else will be staying in the bothy with me because I'm not sure how I feel. Like obviously anyone can stay. I think if there is someone or even if there isn't, I think it'll be an interesting experience to stay there. So because I've not met anyone and it's so quiet, I feel like it's almost the end of the world. You know, like I'm the last person alive. I, uh, I recently watched a movie that had a sort of similar concept to that and it's, it's making me think of that. I'll write the name of the movie here. It's really good if anyone's looking for a movie to watch. But yeah, they were just walking around looking for food. Oh God. Wow. Look up there behind me. It's just a dark, dark forest. Wow. So I'm making good progress with the hike. I've been hiking for around 45 minutes now and the weather's dry, which is amazing. I do have my rain jacket. It's always important to bring your rain jacket and rain trousers in Scotland. Even though the weather has no rain forecast, I've brought it just in case. Whenever I post videos out in nature in Scotland, I often receive quite a few comments from viewers from Japan. Around 10% of the viewers of the channel are from Japan. So, minasan, konnichiwa. A question that I'm often seeing is about bears. So in Scotland, there are no bears. When you go out hiking like this, you don't need to worry about bears. You don't need to carry a bear spray. So it's actually really nice because in Japan, it is such a worry when you go hiking. I constantly have the bear spray in my hand. I've encountered bears before in Japan and they, they kill people every year, the bears in Japan. Um, just a few people, but it's scary. So that's one really good thing about hiking in Scotland. So, minasan, Scotlandoa, kuma ga imasen. Bear spray, hitsionaires. As I've been chatting away, I realize the bothy has come into view in the distance. I can see it there. Oh my goodness, that is so exciting. <gasps> Some of you might be wondering, what is a bothy? Well, a bothy is a basic shelter or refuge, and some can be found in remote rural areas of Scotland. They are unlocked and free to stay at. Bothies vary in size and construction, but are often small, simple buildings made of stone or wood, with minimal amenities. Traditionally, bothies were used by farm workers, shepherds and travellers, as temporary shelter from the harsh Scottish weather. Today, bothies are popular destinations for hikers and outdoor enthusiasts, seeking a rustic and authentic experience in the wilderness. 
If you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that I love flying my drone to capture footage of the outdoors. However, it has taken me quite a while to gain the confidence and skills to be able to fly my drone. There's a fantastic new easy to use drone available called the Hover Air X1. And as I've been hiking to the Bothy, I've been using it to film some clips. The Hover Air X1 weighs only 125 grams and it's smaller than my iPhone. It's the perfect drone to bring on a hike like today because it's so small and it hardly weighs anything. I can just fit it in my pocket. So actually today I've been carrying it in my pocket, in my leggings like this. So it's really easy to grab and I don't have to take off my bag and unload the other drone. And that weighs 800 grams together with the controller and all the batteries. There's no controller. This is basically the entire drone. So you don't need to learn how to fly it because it flies itself. This drone is perfect for capturing quick images and videos of yourself or your family and friends. And it's a bit like an automated selfie stick because it follows me around. You use the app to first set up the drone, but after that, all you need to do is put the drone in the palm of your hand, press this button, and it will record you in whatever mode you've set it on. The drone has over five different flight modes that you can choose from. I'll definitely be using this, especially for filming content for TikTok and Instagram in the vertical mode. And then perhaps when I go on hikes where I have to walk a long distance and I don't want to carry much luggage or equipment with me because this is just so, so small. Thank you to Hover Air for making it possible to film this video today. And you can find out more via the link below. And if you use my code RUTH15, you can get 15 pounds off. Now let's explore the body. Okay. I've arrived at the Bothy. Let's go inside. Wow. I just made it inside the Bothy. Let's take a tour. So this is the first room. As you come in the door, there's a place for a few people to sleep and also an upper bunk. Looks like there's a light bulb. I wonder if that works. Let's see if this works. No, I'm not really sure. Over here there's a little candle, so I'll probably light that later on. As you come in the door, there's a shovel there for number twos, I presume. That's quite helpful. There's also this other door here, so let's go in here and have a look. So this is the main room of the Bothy. This will be my home for the night. Wow. So in here there's more space for sleeping, probably enough space there for two people to lie down. There's a table with some chairs. There's a fire. I'll be making use of that later on. And then over there there's another room. So that's where the windows were as I entered. Let's have a look inside. Okay. So through here, oh, there's some things. There's ketchup, brown sauce, a bottle of Sol beer, some cans. Someone's left a label. There's beer, 4.8%. There's some lentil and bacon soup and some dog food. Oh my goodness, dog food. There's some playing cards and also some games. On the bottom of the shelf, there's some pans for cooking and there's a kettle there as well. And then this is the view out the window and this is where I walked up to the Bothy earlier. Above the fireplace, there's some things here. Oh, someone's left some cereal bars. Oh, there's a lighter, which is very helpful. Some toilet paper, aluminium foil, and then someone's also left some drinks, Capri Sun and some Lipton iced tea. Oh, here's also a book. I wonder if this is the guest book. So I'm just looking through the book and doesn't look like many people have been using it. I know it says 2022, but actually this is for 2024. So it's March at the moment, but it looks like no one's been here during March. Oh, there's someone. After a long, wet, filthy day, sleep in the warmer room. 
we ended up snuggled together. No complaint for me. That was last week. Been in like five or six days since someone slept in the bothy. Here's instructions about staying in a bothy. So why should I carry out my rubbish? It explains about that, also about the toilet. And here's information about the Mountain Bothy Association. Many bothies in Scotland are maintained and managed by the Mountain Bothies Association, or the MBA. It's a charitable organisation which was founded in 1965 and they maintain around 100 shelters in some of the remoter parts of Great Britain. The Mountain Bothies Association rely on volunteers to maintain bothies, carrying out essential repairs, cleaning and restocking supplies. The MBA operates on a philosophy of self-reliance and responsibility, encouraging visitors to leave bothies in the same condition or better than they found them. It's possible to support the MBA by joining for a yearly membership of £25. While they provide a shelter from the elements, bothies do not typically have amenities like electricity, running water, toilets or heating. Visitors must bring their own sleeping bags, food and cooking equipment. Staying in a bothy can be a unique and rewarding experience, especially as many are located in remote areas. If you plan to use a bothy, it's essential to be well prepared and respectful of bothy etiquette, which includes leaving no trace, being considerate of other users and following any specific rules or guidelines posted by the MBA or local authorities. So just beside the bothy here is this and it looks like it's for cutting wood and inside the bothy there's also a saw for cutting wood but I believe you have to bring your own wood with you. You can't just chop down trees. Usually wet wood isn't great for fires anyway. Oh my god, someone's been to the toilet here on the right hand side and then just thrown all their toilet paper here. Oh, that's so gross. Why don't people go further away? Oh my God, there's more there. Oh, that's really disappointing to see that actually. Also over here, there's lots of number twos and toilet paper. Oh, that's really horrible. Why don't people go further away? There's so many places to go over there in the forest. So down here, there's a little stream, a little burn. If you need water for cooking, you can get water here. Lovely Scottish water. So I've given you the tour already of the bothy. Now I'm going to set up my mattress and my sleeping bag. It's suddenly getting quite dark and just being honest, I'm feeling a little bit scared. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't know if it's better to sleep in this room or in there. I think I'll sleep in here and I'll put my head at this end. I don't want to be near the window. I really don't like not having curtains. Okay, the sleeping mat is all set up. This is usually my summer sleeping bag but um, I couldn't bring the winter one with me because it's way too bulky, but this should be fine. It goes down to zero, and I think tonight's around seven degrees. Now the bedroom is ready. I'm going to light some of these candles just to try and brighten up the room because it's getting really dark in here. I'm getting really hungry. So start organizing the food. I don't know if I will light the fire. I did bring a lot of firewood with me, but I feel like it might make the room really smoky. Oh, I don't know, it's getting so dark in here now. Oh, okay. Anyway, I brought some rhubarb liqueur with me. This was made by my friend's mother using the rhubarb from her allotment. Anyway, hopefully this will get rid of my <laughs> scaredness. That is delicious. So I found some candles on the mantelpiece and I'm going to light these and put them up here in the candle holders. Maybe my silence means 
I'm really, really shitting it. I'm really quite scared of it staying here, to be honest. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it really will be fine. Oh, with the candles, it's really nice. It's like a cozy cottage. Okay. Oh, there's tea lights up here too. Oh. So if anything bad happens, there is a phone signal outside, not inside, but outside, just outside the bothy. I actually was receiving some emails. So I really feel like I want to light the fire. I don't know, I'm quite hesitant to do it. Anyway, let's have another sip of this. Okay, I'm getting quite cold. So I'm going to make a cup of tea. I wonder if anyone else will come. Probably not now, because it's already dark. Now it's almost 7 p.m. Oh my gosh, it's almost 7 p.m. That's crazy. So I don't know why I'm feeling a little bit anxious because I've stayed in a camper van so many times in different countries. I feel like here is just so remote and to get away, you have to hike over one hour like to get back to the camper van. So maybe that's why. And also there's no locks. So on my camper van, I always lock the doors. Maybe that's also why. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> oh God. Okay, it's getting really cold. So I think I will light the fire. Let's do this. Looks like we have lift off. Let's check how the fire is doing. Oh, that's a beauty, that one, isn't it? What a lovely fire. You can feel the heat starting to come off it a little bit as well. I've put all the rest of the firewood beside the fire. If I don't use it all, I'll leave it here for the next people who come. There's a big monster back there. Someone's been trying to burn that thing. Looks a bit big to fit in actually. Let's put a big one in now. Now I've had my cup of tea. So next I'm going to make some food. Have some miso I brought from Japan and some udon noodles from Tesco. Let's get this on. So everyone, how would you feel staying here on your own? Would you be okay? Would you be a tiny bit scared? Or would you just not even come in the first place? <laughs> I'm interested to know your thoughts. <gasps> Him settling into my new new home here, the Bothy. I'm actually uh, starting to feel okay now. I've got the fire on, got the dinner on. This is cooking up nicely now, and I'm not feeling so nervous anymore. Might be because I've drank pretty much all the rhubarb liqueur, but actually this is over six years old, so uh, it doesn't feel like there's any alcohol left in it. 
don't really feel much impact from it. But anyway, yeah, should have brought some wh whiskey. <laughs> I might crack open those beers that are over there. <laughs> I think the reason I was quite nervous was just because it's a new place. Does anyone else ever feel like that when they go to a new place? They feel a little bit anxious at first, but sort of settling in and then it's feeling a bit more familiar now, which is good. Let's taste it. Maybe a little drop more. I mean, like seriously salty, but... Okay, I think that's ready. Here's my udon miso soup. This is what it looks like. I think coming to a bothy would be really good with a friend and you can chat, have a fire, enjoy some drinks. And with this one here, there's no network, uh, no mobile network inside the bothy. So it's really nice that it's off grid and you're cut off from the outside world. Sometimes you need that. <sighs> so I shouldn't really talk about this when I'm eating, but it's really, really disappointing to see that mess outside the bothy. So there's a spade or shovel provided there at the door. There's also signs around saying what to do if you need the toilet. And I find that so horrible and I'm sure anyone else that sees that will also find that really horrible. So if you do use a bothy, please follow the rules and guidance for going to the toilet because if that is the situation at lots of bothies, maybe it is, then they're just not going to exist anymore because the Mountain Bothy Association might stop taking care of them or something. So please, if you use a bothy, don't do that. I've been reading for about an hour and a half and there's a few strange noises. No one else has turned up. It's now around nine o'clock, but I'm hearing some strange noises. I don't know if it's maybe a mouse or it's the chimney. Pretty much used all the wood. It's actually warmer if I open it up. Anyway, has anyone read this book? The Diary of a Bookseller. It's very good. I think after this, I might go to bed because there's no more wood. Put these last pieces in. It feels really weird without curtains because I feel like someone could be standing outside and looking in the window. I don't know, I feel really scared. I don't know why. I just feel really nervous. Unfortunately, there's a rip in my jacket. Anyway, I'm going to put on these thermals under my clothes or maybe just over them. It's quite cold now. I can put on every piece of clothing I have. Extra layer of thermal leggings and a thermal top. And I'm going to put on a second pair of socks as well. Okay, I'm going to go to bed now. I've put on every single layer of clothing that I have. I also have this buff scarf thing. I might put that on too. And I'm going to get in the sleeping bag and get warm. I think I will leave the candles on because I want to see what's going on around me. everyone. Good morning. I just woke up. It's 6.45 a.m. and I made it to the morning. I survived my night in the Bothy. This is something I've always wanted to do but to be honest last night I was a bit scared. There were some 
strange noises. I think it might have been a mouse or something, but it was a little bit weird. And I had some earplugs with me, so I put them in to block out the strange noises. And it was cold. I think I woke up so many times during the night. The sleeping bag wasn't powerful enough to keep me warm overnight. I think the sleeping bag is, is much better for the summer months, even though it is rated to go down to zero degrees. I don't think that's the comfort level, um, but it was okay. It was only like seven degrees last night. God, I'm still hearing weird noises. Okay, I'm going to go outside and make a coffee and then I'm going to hike back. <laughs> It's raining outside, so I've put the waterproof jacket on my bag. I've also got all my waterproofs on now, and I'm going to head back and start hiking. I think it'll take around an hour, approximately, to hike back. So time to say goodbye to the Bothy. Bye bye, Bothy. Although it was a slightly unnerving overnight, I'm really glad I pushed myself out of my comfort zone and stayed in a Scottish bothy, as it's something I've always wanted to do. I hope this video gives you a bit of insight into what a night in a Scottish bothy might be like. See you next time.